This year with the, the chassis prep, it was a whole new car, so we had pretty much a clean slate to kind of design the car how we wanted it to go. I left pretty much everything in Bub's hands as far as how the chassis prep was going to go. As far as the car went and things that I personally wanted to see in the car was I had the idea of doing the 180SX S13 front to the S14 chassis. Something that I've always personally liked. It's different, it catches a lot of people off guard. It's being that I was doing the conversion that isn't super popular. I put Bub through a lot of hassle as far as almost kind of custom making fenders for the car. What we were able to do was take a set of just Origin Type 3 fenders for the S13 front that I wanted. There had to be some cutting, some widening to the top parts of it to make it fit. One, because the S13 hood is a little bit narrower than S14 hood, so we had to kind of bring the fenders in to match the width of the hood, but as well as go out to match the body line of the door of the chassis so that we would have a clean kind of OEM look to it. And so I ended up putting Bub through a, a bunch of trouble with, with doing that and getting it to work and fit to the car. It was kind of a, a different way how most conversion fenders work with the car. Usually they will have the, the piece that's needed for the 14 and which actually I think Origin has uh, just released now. I don't know if it was inspiration from seeing my car or what, but they've released a 14.3 conversion fender uh, in the Type 3 style that's uh, pretty much exactly what I, you know, what I had Bub build for our car this year. So it's kind of cool to see that come out now and how they did it versus what different approach we took to doing it with making the A-pillar come down to reach it. When you get your you know, initial shipment of tires for the year for a new car, it's kind of a, it's a super like overjoyous feeling. The cars can't run or drive without having you know, a good tire on it. So when you see a truck pull up with about 120 tires in it, the excitement starts to kind of jump in at that point because then you know that, all right, the season's right about to take off and it's about to start. This year we're working with Vibrant Performance again. I worked with them a bit last year as far as getting some of the fabrication components for the S13 I had last year. This year we were able to uh, continue our relationship with them. Pretty much all of our intercooler piping is based off of just their base fabrication components. We're using one of their intercooler cores, I think it's rated for 850 or so horsepower. So we're using that core on the cars. So actually Nate and I have the same exact core on the cars. So it's another thing that we kind of share, which is a lot of the, the vibrant pieces together. How far up? Obviously cooling was, uh, was a pretty big priority with the cars. After seeing a lot of the guys uh, in previous years struggle with cooling issues and overheating issues, I didn't want to have to struggle with that. So I wanted to make sure what I got was going to work. This year we're going with a rear mount radiator setup, which my last year's car did not have. I did some research, I found a radiator online that included a fan shroud kit. Luckily, Bub kind of caught me when he did before I ordered it because the one I was looking at was quite a bit larger than the one we ended up settling with. And the one we settled with was actually ginormous. And it pretty much takes the whole back of the car after the fuel cell itself. To fit this was, I think, more of a pain than it should have been, just because I chose such a large size radiator. However, after uh, a few test runs with it and dyno and testing itself with the car, it's proven.
All of us have been working on 240s for, I mean, about a decade, at least all of us. And so at that point, we can appoint different positions of the car for us all to work on. That's when things really picked up speed as far as the build went. Once everything was painted, at that point it's pretty much game on as far as just bolting everything onto the car and going. I could take the rear end and get the full subframe assembled with all the parts on the subframe before even putting it on the car. We can have Bub and Ant working on getting the engine and transmission together and get those in the car while I'm working on the other side of the car. Once the engine's in the car, JT is then able to just go ahead and do our intercooler piping and our wastegate dump tube, which this year we decided to go out the hood. We tried to make the cars as loud as we could with just little tricks of our sleeve, I guess you could say, to just trying to make them louder and have their own distinct sound. We did a really cool design to where it actually tapers from 38 millimeters out of the wastegate and goes up to a I think it's a four inch out of the hood. We did it to try and hopefully amplify the sound a bit coming out of the car, just because we wanted the cars to be heard, we wanted them to be loud. And that way when people are walking up to the track and they can't even see it yet, they know it's our cars on the track. We try and have the cars 100% ready for the first round for every little detail and aspect as we could. When it comes to finalizing the car, obviously there's a lot of just little detail work that in some instances is uh, overlooked when it comes down to little things in the interior uh, as far as building a base plate to hold our gauges into the factory gauge cluster of the 240. Uh, Bub was able to kind of come up and craft something with that. You know, you go into you know, a race car and you don't really expect to see super detailed work so much as into some race cars as to where with me and Nate's car, you get to go in and look and go, damn, they really thought about where they're putting that gauge. The dash is actually, it's wrapped and it's got stitching to match the car. So it's kind of cool that Bub has just the, that mentality of almost building show cars as well as race cars. So they come out toward the end of the day, like we, they're, they're magazine ready cars before they even hit the track. Not a lot of the cars in FD really get that kind of detail work to them and to be around the cars as they're getting built and see the little things that are just so planned out ahead of time and then when they're finally uh, together is just really awesome. Yeah, today's Friday. <laughs> it's one of our last weeks of our build. As of now, we're gonna get the cars done for shakedown by Tuesday. Tuesday is kind of our, our deadline. The transmission came in today, so we got transmission buttoned up, uh, up in the car, and now we got axles going in, we're doing drive shaft, drive shaft loop all the, uh, the final touches for the underside of the car, and then afterwards we got to still uh, finish on our, our wiring and stuff like that, so. This time of year is where the overnight, uh, just the all-nighters happen. Most of our fuel lines are in, we just got to kind of button them up, and then we're probably about two days out from starting.
the vinyl, none of the graphics are on yet, but the car is coming together and it's looking awesome.